Call this meeting of the Northwest Independent School District to order. Let the record show that a quorum of board members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of the meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code 551. The board will convene into closed session pursuant to Texas Government Code 55, Chapter 551, including sections 551.071, consultation with board's attorney, and 551.072, real estate matters, and 551.074, personnel matters. We will now reconvene the regular meeting. It is 6.35. Dr. Warren? All right, folks. Um, I think we are past the bad weather. Now, I think it's past the worst. But if something were to reform, uh, Mr. McClure, who is in charge of our facilities and our safety programs, he's going to be watching the weather as we uh, meet. And if we do need to go back into the hallway, he'll give us the a little signal and we'll all go there. But like I said, like we, we think everything is past us now. But if we move this along pretty quick, we'll be really good. <laughs> Tim was in charge of our facilities. And <laughs> all right, so uh, great to see everybody. If you please rise. And if you feel comfortable doing so, please pray with me. Our dear Heavenly Lord, thank you, thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. Thank you for your protection, Lord. Uh, we ask that you bless this meeting and, and, of course, see us all safe at home. Lord, we ask that you be, um, you know, in the crazy world that we're living in right now. Just, you know, you know, so many of us need you. Uh, we've had uh, family and friends affected by fires. We've had uh, we've had folks affected today by, by the storms and, and, of course, the war. Uh, Lord, just be with those who need you the most. Um, and... Above all things else, just provide your love, your guidance, your wisdom, and your protection to our children. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, Mrs. Cobb. Where did American flag go? Uh, so the man in charge of the facilities. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now.
now move to public oh, recognitions. Oh, we, this is the time of the uh, of the uh, meeting that we usually recognize as many kids and staff and community members are in. We told everybody to stay home tonight just because we knew the bad weather was rolling in. So uh, we will all those folks you see to be recognized tonight. We will have them up next board meeting and we will be very proudly will recognize that that group. We'll now move to public participation, and there is none. That will be then take us to consent agenda. Uh, any items that need to be pulled off the agenda? Please tell us. Okay, Madam President, I move to approve the consent agenda as submitted. Second. All right. We have a motion by Mr. Sluter, a second by Mrs. Cobb, to approve the consent agenda as submitted. All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, Board. <laughs> we'll now move to item eight. Consider any items removed from the consent agenda, and there were none. That will take us to discussion action. And the first discussion action item is the naming of the principal for Worthington Middle School. Uh, board, uh, let me first say we appreciate all those who uh, applied for the principal of our new middle school number seven, Worthington Middle School, at a great site of individuals. I very proudly bring you the name Natalie Childress, current principal of Wilson Middle School, who will uh, who will, we would like to open our brand new Worthington Middle School, and that would be set tail for the fall of 2023. Madam President, Mrs. Cobb, I move to name Natalie Childress as principal of Worthington Middle School as recommended by the administration. Second. We have a motion by Mrs. Cobb and a second by Dr. Roush to name Natalie Childress as principal of Worthington Middle School as recommended by administration. All in favor? Thank you, Board. Motion carries. Item B, the 2022-2023 Campus Growth Budget Update. Well, Board, uh, this is a little bit of an anomaly this year. You usually don't see this twice, but because of uh, our wonderful demographer <laughs> and bringing us our new numbers this last board meeting, uh, we did need to. And, and I tell people all the time, I've been a superintendent in West Texas where we've had to cut programs because kids were leaving us. This is a much better challenge to have than having more kids come to us than we even thought. So um, Kim Barker and uh, Jonathan Pestusik will uh, come and bring you their report again, update you on the numbers, and then I'll tell you where we're going to go from there and just what's to be done after this. Thank you, Dr. Warren, Dr. Simpson, members of the board. Yes, this is um, a unique day to come back again to answer some additional growth units. Um, request for you. Um, I think a phrase that I have coined over the past few weeks is what an exciting time it is to be in the fastest growing district in Texas. So it is exciting, it's a challenge, but I think we're ready to rise to that challenge. Obviously, you know that um, the work in our department aligns with strategic goal too, we take that very seriously. A couple of considerations as we bring this to you today. We did receive updated demographic um, information from Mr. Templeton um, that was different from the quarter three projections that we use typically to staff our schools. Um, as some of the phrases he used were the unprecedented growth and how we're not, not meeting the models that he's seen in other districts as well, that we're growing exceptionally quick in a one to three year area. So we want to be prepared for that. Um, so as you know, we'll have an additional, a little over 500 additional students than we originally planned for. So once we got that information, we can see where those students were going to be placed. We've determined that we need 23 additional elementary teachers and three additional middle school teachers. So that's our total teachers at 26 or 1.7 million. Now, I want to make sure that you know we staffed aggressively. Um, we looked at those fast growth areas, and if there were campuses and sections that we knew were going to be three, four, five students away from adding an additional teacher, and we knew it was fast growth, we gave them that teacher. So we're going to start with more teachers. Um, our goal is to avoid what has happened this year where we've been adding all year. Our goal is to give that to them early. That way their students aren't having to split classes as much and things like that. We have the teachers we need. We felt um, given the rapid growth, this was the best way to staff our campuses. In addition, we have several campuses that went over the 700 mark or the 750 mark where we add some additional supports to those campuses, such as fine arts assistants, campus assistants, PE teachers. So we'll have a, a total for that as well of 342,000. 
So this is a breakdown of our full second growth budget for the year to prepare us for opening in August of 22 at $2,058,880. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Now let's, let's get Jonathan up. And before we, we, before we have any questions in total, let's make sure because we wanted to also update you because not only did our need grow because of the uh, demographic data, but our financial structure picture also changed because of that report. So, Jonathan, would you take us through that, please? I will momentarily. Here we go. Thank you. You see this slide? This is the one that we've talked about looking at our revenue and how much we get per initial student. So the only thing that's changed on this would be bullet point number four and number five. So you see we took the students from about 2,000 to 2,300. At the 8,600 per initial student comes to about 19,780,000. Again, going back to where 80% of that should be worth payroll, 80% of that 19780 comes to 15824000 for payroll. This was what was previously discussed on the previous growth. That's why the, that's the previous 6.6. With what Kim Barker just presented, there's the two additional things for campus growth, additional teaching and additional support that comes to the $2 million that she talked about totaling 8738120 in growth. And then, of course, here is our new running total. I changed the beginning balance to 15824 We've already gone through the staff raise of 3%, the guest educator raise, the original growth of teachers of 75 FTEs, the growth of support staff, ancillary staff's growth, and then the new campus operations, leaving at that point 3.693. You do the additional teaching that we just presented of 1.7. The additional campus support of 342,000, that leaves 1.635. And then, of course, the ratio adjustment, if you were to look at that, would be another nine FTEs for 594,000, leaving the balance of 1,041,880. Okay. It's all prior to program staff. That this was all prior to Mr. Templeton's report, so Jonathan has done a great job plugging in our numbers now. And he, he and uh, HR and our special programs, all they're all going to be working on all those things they do to, to uh, figure our revenue. Um, here's, the, here's what's to be determined to make sure we're all on the same page. Number one is we do not, if you remember last board meeting, we don't have an agreed to class size ratio yet. We had the we had one decision uh, keeping the uh, class size ratio uh, the same as this year. We had a decision last time uh, wanted us to keep continue to look at it, so that kind of went away now. So we still need to bring to you recommendations, and your decision needs to be made about truly what the class size ratio is going to do. So that's number one. Uh, we do need we do need to approve. Ask you to approve. The, the new growth budget, the cash growth budget, just because our principals are in the process of hiring right now and, and having those extra teachers in place is very, very uh, important. And I, I talked with uh, one of our elementary uh, principals today. It is very competitive out there. She interviewed almost 10 candidates today, and, and about probably about 10 of her peers interviewed the same people today. And they're, you know, not, we're not even just fighting with other districts. We're fighting among ourselves to try and, and they're, they're doing a great job. We're trying to get the very best teachers. So we, we need to stay on schedule with this position. But number one is uh, I need to bring you back the uh, class size ratio for you to finally vote on to see what we're going to do. We also need to show you the program growth budget of everything that we're needing at the district level because of the growth and where we are right now and what is needed. And then number three, as we discuss, uh, Mr. McClure is going to continue to work with his facilities group to show you, you know, kind of what we will need to do to spread out a little bit more than we had just done, and then that means portable classrooms just because having a thousand more kids coming to the district that we had planned on, you know, we had 20 years of data that uh, contradicted that, but now that we have the new numbers, uh, we, you need to know that cost as well. So absorb all that and give me any questions that you have. Madam President, 
This is Abigail. I make a motion to approve the 2022-2023 campus growth budget update as recommended by administration. We have a motion by Mrs. Hatfield, second by Mrs. Murphy, to approve the 2022-2023 campus growth budget update as recommended by administration. All in favor? Thank you. Good job. Uh, we will now move to item C, resolution regarding wage payments during February 24th, 2022 emergency closure for winter storm. And, Board, I really should have added this to my prayer, that we are not going to have to do this anymore for emergency closures for any kind of storms. But, uh, Board, you've done this plenty of times this year uh, when we had to close temporarily. This takes care of our crew, our hourly equipment. It just protects their, their compensation, and they'll be getting the same checks. Upon your approval, they'll be getting their same paycheck as they always do. I would make a recommend approval. Madam President, <laughs> I motion to approve the resolution regarding wage payments during the February 24th, 2022 emergency closure for winter storm as recommended by the administration. We have a motion by Dr. Roush and a second by Mrs. Hatfield to approve the resolution regarding wage payments during the February 24th, 2022 emergency closure for winter storm as recommended by administration. All in favor? Thank you, Board. We will now move to item D. Consideration of teachers late resignation without good cause and proposed complaint to the State Board of Educator Certification for abandonment of contract. Board, I would recommend approval. Madam President. Mr. Slater. I make that the board find that good cause did not exist for Matthew Purple to resign and abandon his contract for the 2021-2022 school year. That the board authorize the superintendent or its designated to file a complaint with the State Board of Educators Certification to seek sanctions for his abandonment of contract. We have a motion by Mr. Sluter, a second by Mr. Sprouls, that the board find that good cause did not exist for Matthew Purcell, Purple. Purple, to resign and abandon his contract for the 2021-2022 school year and that the board authorize the superintendent or his designee to file a complaint with the State Board for Educator Certification to seek sanctions for his abandonment of contract. All in favor? And we have one abstention. We will now move to item E, consideration of teachers' late resignation without good cause and proposed complaint to the State Board of Educator Certification for abandonment of contract. I recommend approval, Board. Madam President. Mr. Sprouls. I move that the Board find that good cause does not exist for Michael Perry to resign and abandon his contract for the 20 2021-2022 school year, and that the board authorize the superintendent for his destiny to file a complaint with the state board for educator certification and to seek sanctions for his abandonment of contract. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Sprouls and a second by Mrs. Murphy that the board find that good cause did not exist for Michael Perrin to resign and abandon his contract for the 2021-2022 school year and that the board authorize the superintendent or his designee to file a complaint with the State Board for Educator Certification to seek sanctions for his abandonment of contract. All in favor? Motion carries six, one abstention. We'll now move to reports, facilities planning, and construction monthly report. And board this starts on page 76. Mr. Osborne, are you ready to go? You're welcome. Good evening, <laughs> Board. I hope you're all are doing well. Uh, love coming off of a uh, spring break and having this ready. Uh, so uh, we'll cruise right through it here. The current construction projects, uh, the LLC, the Legacy Learning Center, will be the 
uh, last time you see this tonight because we have wrapped that up for the most part. Uh, and then uh, all of us in construction are taking a nice deep breath before the four elementaries uh, get underway here shortly. So uh, we're, we're ready for it and uh, we'll be moving on here uh, shortly. So anyway, uh, Legacy Learning Center phase two. So the phase one, as you remember, was uh, DEAP, now Special Programs, that renovation took place about this time last year. We wrapped it up right around spring break and they moved in. And now we've got professional development and the Rise and Horizons program. So right when you first walk in, we've got uh, the image in the upper left corner, the bright red wall uh, that has some of the brick that came off of there, some of the stone that came off of the wall um, out on uh, the schoolhouse road. So that's incorporated into it. I really wanted to get a, a head-on shot of that red wall to show it to you, but it was during the elections, and there was a very nice lady sitting right there in the middle directing traffic that absolutely would not move for my photo. So uh, I, she was doing a great job. She was uh, uh, directing traffic well and not willing to move, and so I got what I could. And then the lower right-hand picture is the uh, Rise storefront. So right when you first walk in, They've got a great view into this store and, and all the amazing things that those, uh, those students are doing in there. So um, this is on the professional development side. So I think one of the last photos you saw was when it was still under construction. This is what it is now. So it's a bright, gleaming hallway with uh, room after room of professional development uh, conference rooms. All those glass walls that you see are movable, so we can uh, open that entire space up into one really large space. Uh, should Dr. Espinoza and her group uh, ever need a really large room or uh, an average class size room. Um, this is the other side of the main entrance. This is the Rise and Horizons area. So uh, the upper left picture showing you what it was before and now what a really incredible space it is for these students uh, right now. So here's a picture of their mock kitchen, uh, which actually functions as a kitchen. It's really uh, for more instructional and then some of their uh, more casual um, uh, residential areas that they work on and so uh, even one of the mock little apartment rooms where they work on just what it's like to have to make your bed on a daily basis and, and take care of a small apartment and then I just wanted to show you the picture that the, the staff uh, wrote to those students that's on their mark board. I just I was very inspired by their positivity and wanted to share that with you as well. So this is our uh, CW Worthington Middle School. This one is still really hard at ground level to get images uh, that you can understand. So what I thought I would do is give you a side-by-side -side of the, um, the drawings that we're working off of compared to the aerial photo that our contractor took. So these are uh, about at the same scale. Uh, so you've really got a good idea of what we've done so far here. So we've got, I would say, 90% of all the paving uh, poured the road that's um, that comes down on the, the right hand side of the site and then starts to turn along the railroad tracks. We've actually made that turn and have come back up that road towards the school. So the majority of the parking and paving is there. There's just one uh, large parking lot on the right hand or the left hand side of that site that you see is still dirt. Uh, that that'll get poured here in the next, I would say, probably within the next month. Uh, we poured uh, three slabs in the classroom wing area, so uh, although a lot of that infrastructure and that dirt work take months and months and you really don't see anything, uh, things are going to start to move really quickly out there now that we're getting slabs poured. We were actually supposed to start standing some steel tomorrow, but uh, I think um, our Lord and Savior had some uh, other ideas tonight, which is going to push us off a little bit, so uh, we will start hanging some steel probably by the end of the week. And then uh, the pictures that I bring uh, forward from here on out will be uh, a little more ground level and I think uh, easier to understand. Prairie View uh, Elementary School, we did a bus loop out there to get people off of uh, the, the main county road. Um, so this uh, was taken a few weeks ago. Now that uh, bus loop has been uh, poured, it's asphalt because more than likely Prairie View will be getting replaced in the next three to four years or more. And so we didn't want to go through the expense of concrete. So uh, we've got a nice long drive that uh, now loops out in front of the back of this school, which will help get all of those buses off the main road and, and be a nice asset out there. And then our West Operations Facility, um, you can see two aerial views uh, that from, taken from different corners of this. Uh, I was out there earlier today. We've really got all the parking lot uh, poured in concrete now, and the approaches are done. 
the fuel depot uh, and tank just got delivered um, last week, so that's being set in place. Uh, along with uh, now we're focusing on the bus, wa bus wash, which is on the back side of that facility in one of the original open bays. And so uh, this schedule, this project is scheduled to be completed uh, by the end of June, so that we can move all the buses back out there, and Bobby and his group can be ready uh, for the start of school in the fall. And that is it. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. If not, I will bid you good evening. Good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, we'll now move to item B under reports. Recap of the November 2019 bond refunding. Yes, sir. Uh, I do have some good news. Um, on February 14th, we did a parameter order um, to approve a refunding opportunity. Um, on March 8th, we priced that and sold those. Um, there's the summary sheet up there. The refund resulted in $26,094,184 in debt savings, which is about $12,000 in present value or a percentage of 8.762. Um, if you remember correctly, we brought this to you. We wanted to make sure we saved at least 7%. Of course, we got to 8.762. We also brought a full um, resale of 289 million, but we only sold 141 million. The market at the time, the other bonds were not to be as profitable to make that savings, so we actually did not sell the other 148 million. Um, with that being said, though, we can still take that if the market changes and we can do that. We still, I think, had a year on that parameter, so it's still going to be out there looking. If something comes up, we will continue to do it. On the far right, you can see that is the actual, by year, the amount of savings. And it, at the bottom, adds up to the $26 million in savings for our taxpayers on the INS side. We will now move to the board president's report. Uh, update on the superintendent's search. Uh, we completed the second round of interviews prior to spring break. We met earlier this afternoon to discuss recommendations for a loan finalist. Uh, and pending uh, further study, we should have a special meeting uh, Monday, March 28th to announce the loan finalist. Anything you want to add? The next thing on my agenda is Board of Member Election. Early voting is April 25th through May 3rd, and the election day is May 7th. Uh, board. Uh, board, just three things from me. Uh, please remember uh, this coming Thursday, March 24th, we have Berkshire dedication, so please be there. And we will. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Simpson has assigned Mrs. Scott to do the speaking on behalf. <laughs> <laughs> We have the Berkshire uh, dedication will start at six o'clock, so that'll be a great uh, that'll be a great uh, time to uh, officially dedicate Berkshire. This coming Saturday, the 26th, we have our annual NIF gala. Uh, it'll be out at the uh, at the ranch uh, again this year. Uh, and it's, uh, it's always been a really good facility to be able to do that. That'll start at uh, the VIP reception starts at five, and the actual gala starts at 5:30, and uh, we will be up there to support the NIF. And then a uh, really great time of year. It's time, time to get ready for Inspire Celebration. We will, uh, we will uh, make sure that all of our retirees know how much we love them. We will, we will have all of our Teachers of the Year and uh, all those those other staff members we celebrate. That is on Thursday, April the 7th. It will be at 6 p.m. and that will be at Northwest High School. And so we'll be right there. Madam President, that's all I have. Thank you. Oh, I get the gift. I always wonder why we're in there.